end of this video um we already discussed actually how the brightens you know the brighton cycle uh, works with intercooling reading and regeneration now we'll try to understand the total process here so if you look um here so this is the state one so at this state gas it enters into this compressor and this is actually the overall physical orientation of the schematic of the system of the Brayton cycle here this is actually the TS diagram so in this TS we will try to connect this schematic with this TS diagram so this is really important so we need to understand actually this so for the first part I said the intercooling reheating or regenerations so if you don't understand it's all right so you need you must need to understand this so the gas it enters into this um, compressor so this is state one and here this is actually our state one the compressor how it works um, we know from the Brayton cycle that um, at state one to two it will be isentropic compression so isentropic means no change of the entropy here this is T diagram so this is the entropy and this is the temperature so when it will work through this process this state 1 to state 2 into the compressor there will be a isentropic uh, compression so through 1 to 2 so here in this case you can see the no change of the entropy so at a state 1 and a state 2 so entropy is constant so we can say um, s1 it is equal s2 yes we can tell that because it is isentropic process now at this section at state 2 we have multi you know compression here and in between this we have the intercooler so the temperature rise here you can see if we go this way if we go this way so the temperature at state 2 it increased so now we have intercooler in between the compression so the temperature then now it will be cooled okay at constant pressure now it will be cooled at constant pressure to state 3 and then it will enter into the the gas will enter into the compressor this is the state 3 so in this case you can see the temperature decreased and at a state 3 temperature is equal to state 1 like when what we can see from here the temperature t1 and t3 they are equal and now at compressor 2 again the gas will compressed isentropically so it will compressed isentropically and the temperature will increase again temperature will increase and you can see the temperature for um, this stage 4 and stage 2 it will be same so the pressure it will be same over there so then from the state when when it comes it leaves the compressor too then what will happen it will you know enter into the where it will enter into the regenerator okay at a state 4 the gas enters the regenerator where it will be you know where it will be heated to the temperature t5 this is the state 5 so where it will be the gas which is leaving this compressor will enter into the regenerator it will be heated here it will be heated here at temperature t5 okay at constant pressure so and if it is a ideal regenerator then the gas which is leaving this regenerator at the the temperature it will be it will be equal to the temperature of the turbine exit like the the exhaust gas temperature so the temperature of t9 t5 it will be always same if it is a ideal regenerator so in this um, you see here this uh, ts diagram you look here this is 5 this is 9 so if if you see they are in the same line in parallel so temperature 5 and temperature 9 is same they are equal so provided if it is um, ideal regenerator okay so once uh, it comes it leaves this regenerator then it will enter into the combustion chamber 
Okay, so that means combustion chamber means it is actually the primary source of the heat addition. So the total, you know, the primary heat addition will take place actually in between these two processes, process 5 to process 6. Okay, process 5 to process 6. If you look here, um, this is process 5 and this is process 6 and it says, okay, the heat addition, Q in. So that means the heat is coming here. So this is where the heat addition will take place. So when it will leave the combustion chamber, it will get, the gas will gain some heat, the temperature will increase. So this is T6. You can see some linear increase to T6. And at stage 6, it will then enter into the turbine. And you know what happened in the turbine. In the turbine, gas will expand isentropically. And that expansion means, you know, the temperature will decrease. So from this 6 to 7, you see some isentropic change. Here, you can see the temperature decreasing and the entropy is constant. So now it's stage 3. In between this, this is a multi-stage expansion. So in between these two turbine we have the reheater here so then the gas enters into the reheater where you know um, you know the function then it will be heated again and at constant pressure so heat will increase and the temperature now this is T8 here then at a state 8 the gas will then enter into the turbine again and in the turbine it will the gas will expand isentropically again so that means the temperature will decrease again and the entropy will remain unchanged. So here the temperature will be T9. So finally this exhaust gas will, it is a high temperature gas, it will enter into the, you know, the regenerator. It will, you know, enter into the regenerator. Right? So the exist gas, the, the gas exists, the turbine at this state, state 9 here and it in enters into the regenerator and then it will be cooled to this state, state 10. So this is actually the regeneration state. So we had the heat generation state uh, previously from 4 to 5, okay, 4 to 5 it, it got some heat, so the heat regeneration and here it some heat saved, okay. So at, you know, this is actually the state 10 where uh, it is cooled to the constant pressure. So in this way, you can see the cycle is completed. So this 10 different states. So what you can see, cycle here, it is completed, cooling the gas to the initial state. So from this 10, it cooling the gas to the initial state by, you know, rejecting some heat. This is the heat out. So heat out is happening in this in between these two states, 10 to 1, and heat input you see here from 5 to 6. So now we know previously that when we have a two stage compressor, so the total work for a two stage compressor we can minimize. So for two stage, two stage compressor, the total work can be minimized when the pressure ratio is equal throughout the system. So here, what we can see, guys. The pressure here, pressure here, it will be same. Pressure here, pressure here, it will be same. Because it is in the same line. Similarly, this is isentropic process, this is isentropic. So pressure here, pressure here, will be same. Here, here, it will be same. So that means we can tell that the pressure ratio for this, let's say, this isentropic process, that means state 1 to 2 and 3 to 4, they are equal. So we can say P2, P1 equal P4, P3 from here. Similarly, for the turbine, we need the expansion. We can say P6, P7 equal P8, P9. So that we can write. Okay. So when we will analyze some actual gas turbine cycle, then um, we actually will use this sort of uh, this uh, expressions. We need to, you know, um, keep in mind some other factors like the irreversibilities for the compressor for the turbine, you know, um, the regenerators. So, because it we will experience some, um, you know, some pressure drop in the heat exchanger. So we need to consider all of those things. But 
this is actually how the Brayton cycle uh, works with three different components the intercooling, reheating, and the regenerating. I guess so. I believe you understand the general, uh, you know, working principles of the Brayton cycles with intercooling, reheating, and the regenerations. And yeah, we'll discuss it a bit more during the lecture.